eastern region, fertile, fabulous, a land encompassing over 290,000 square miles. Through this region flow mighty rivers, rivers that rise at the feet of the gods, rivers that shape the lives of men, rivers that have changed the course of history. We reverence these rivers for their waters give us life and on their broad backs our people ply their trade. And when they flow in peace, the murmur of their waters is as gentle as the voice of a loving mother. But the rivers can also rise and roar, and those who live within their reaches become the helpless victims of their vengeance. Freedom would be an empty phrase if we fail to tame these rivers, to yoke their strength and will for the common good. And so throughout the eastern region, numerous dams have arisen, while others are a-building, to transform petulant waters into patient potential power, so that the rivers work for and not against man. The Mandira Dam a project to ensure a continuous supply of water for the new steel city, Raurkela. The Maithon Dam, completed in 1957 across the Baraka in Bihar, to store over a million acre feet of water and with a potential capacity of 60,000 kilowatts of power. Bihar's Konar Dam, completed in 1954. The Umtru Dam in Assam to bring prosperity to the regions which include the Khasi and Jaintia Hills. This dam will generate nearly eight and a half thousand kilowatts of electrical energy. Orissa's Hirakud Dam across the Mahanadi, the world's largest mainstream dam, 15,748 feet long, impounding over six and a half million acre feet of water with an installed capacity of 123,000 kilowatts of power. And from these bastions for better living, a filigree of modern canals carry pent-up waters to thirsting fields far and near for fuller harvests so that none may hunger. The pent-up waters will satisfy another hunger too, the hunger of our new industries for power. For these dams will unleash over 421,000 kilowatts of electrical energy by the end of the second plan, thanks to their hydroelectric turbines. Hiraku's electric power will feed the new steel giant, Raurkela, equipped with the biggest steel rolling mills building in Asia. But steel goes to make steel, for the framework of these massive constructions contain 44,000 tons of steel. The first steel ingot in the public sector was produced at Raurkela on the 29th April 1959. Eventually, the annual output will be around 1 million tons of steel ingots to be fashioned into finished plates, sheets, strips and tin plate. About 350 miles eastwards of Raurkela is another steel giant at Turgapur, which was recently commissioned. With three blast furnaces, each capable of producing 1,250 tons of iron per day, the total capacity will be 1 million tons of ingots annually.
A joint Indo-British venture, the plant is flexibly planned so that in future years it can be expanded to produce two and a half million tons of steel every year. The Durdapur coke ovens, three batteries, turn out about 4,000 tons of top quality coke every day for the steel mill. Hirakud's hydroelectrical energy activates new industries like the Indian Aluminium Company near Calcutta and the Hindustan Cables in West Bengal. This factory is now being expanded to produce a thousand miles of cable and 300 miles of coaxial cable annually. A new signpost of progress has arisen in Orissa's remote Jodo Valley. The fabulous ferromanganese plant. It will produce annually over 30,000 tons of ferromanganese, a vital metal for making steel. This gigantic fertilizer factory at Sindri, the largest in Asia, saves the nation 100 million rupees every year in foreign exchange, for it produces 19% of our needs of nitrogenous fertilizer. Sindri manufactures annually 350,000 tons of ammonium sulfate. The helping hand of science fashioning white manure, solving the problems of how our fields can yield fuller harvests. Sindri has developed into an important training center for young engineers and technicians. The National Coal Development Council has its headquarters at Ranchi in Bihar. And well it may, for the coal fields of the eastern region supply about 90% of all the coal now being mined in the country. And it is the coal from Bihar and West Bengal which meets most of our railway's demands, demands totaling over 14 million tons annually. Though coal still remains the lifeblood of industry and transport, it is also an essential requisite for heavy industries, especially of iron and steel. Another requisite is iron ore, which is also fast-earning, valuable foreign exchange for India. The Kiriburu Iron Ore Project of the National Mineral Development Council is being developed. Situated in the verdant jungles of Orissa, at the foothills of the northern blocks of the Bonai Range, Kiriburu is the center of one of the largest iron ore deposits in the world. The Kiriburu deposits are estimated at 114 million tons. The mines of this area are the first mechanized undertakings in the iron ore mining industry of the public sector. The project involves an initial outlay of 80 million rupees and will give employment directly or indirectly to thousands of workers. If coal is the king of the rails, then oil is indeed king of the road. And Naharkatya in Assam holds promise of making it the oil state of India. Naharkatya will supplement Digboy's production of 4,500 barrels a day from Assam's oldest oil fields and one of the oldest in the world. Naharkatya's liquid fuel will be piped to the refineries at Nunmati near Gauhati and to Barauni in Bihar. A world drilling record was established here. Thanks to industrial units in the eastern region like the Chitaranjan Locomotive Works, India is today self-sufficient in steam locomotives.
Originally designed to produce 120 locomotives annually, Chittaranjan has not only topped the target with nearly 50 more each year, but it recently turned out its thousandth iron horse. Our major handicap, however, is the lack of an adequate road system. For every 1,000 of our population, we have only three quarters of a mile of road, whereas the United States of America has 21 miles. Lack of roads is the root cause of most of our economic ills because production cannot increase abundantly if men and materials cannot move freely from place to place. As the success of the ancient Mauryan Empire depended largely on its highways, the economic success of the eastern region will also depend on an adequate system of roads. Highways are planned and being progressed today to interlink this whole vast area. It is an immense operation needing enormous finances for the region is a composite of mountain and plain, dense jungle and marsh, and cleaved by rivers as difficult to ford as any in the world. But bridges of steel and concrete among the largest in Asia are now being built to outwit the wayward rivers, to make road journeys as pleasant as they were perilous before. Yes, the frontiers of this region are slowly but surely being conquered. But the outposts of the new economy are the research institutes and their frontiersmen, the research scientists. In the Central Glass and Ceramic Research Institute at Jadavpur, Calcutta, our basic needs in pottery, porcelain, refractories and enamels are being explored and developed. Here, India's wealth of raw materials is transformed into a thousand new uses by the alchemists of the atom age. The Indian Institute of Technology at Kharagpur was the first of four higher technological institutes to begin functioning. Here, accent on the humanities, as well as on the basic sciences, ensure an all-round education for our future technicians. Equipped with modern laboratories, the Institute offers training courses in many branches of engineering and technology, including naval architecture, to help India attain self-sufficiency in the shipbuilding industry. The University College of Engineering at Burla, founded in 1956 in the Hirakud colony, has provision for the degree of Bachelor of Science in the various branches of engineering. Gauhati gains a new importance in the economic growth of the region with the establishment of its engineering college. It becomes a facet for technical training of Gauhati's expanding university. While in West Bengal, agriculture's progress is ensured with a new college near Calcutta. The River Research Institute at Gauhati will study and solve the complex problems of river control and management, so vital to a region that abounds in rivers. At Katex Central Rice Research Institute, research scientists and students are engaged in finding modern techniques for increasing the country's rice production. Here, new and better strains of rice are developed and studied on experimental farms attached to the institute. Effective methods of pest control are being evolved 
to save the crops from the ravages of many types of insects. The Home Economics Training Center was started at Bhubaneswar to cater to the needs of the most vital unit, the family. A one-year training period covers family, food and nutrition, housing and home management, clothing and laundry, child care, arts and crafts, cottage industries, the many branches of agriculture and so forth. Trained teachers give a thorough grounding in these activities, supplementing theory with practical work in villages. Village industries, the mainstay of the village economy throughout the region, are being revitalized through improved methods of design and manufacture, cooperative production and marketing. To promote medical aid, a surgical instrument servicing station has been established by the Directorate of Industries West Bengal at Baruipur near Calcutta. Making these instruments was a former cottage industry, now streamlined by modern science and technical production. Hospitals like this one in the Gero Hills of Assam typify the high standard of the health services now being offered on an increasing scale to Assam's once neglected hill tribes. These services are freely available to all, even the very young. The Gero Hills resound to men and machines. While the men learn new farming methods, the women here spend many useful hours at the Weaving and Industrial Cooperative Come Weaving Training Center. A long name, it's true, but one that is a symbol of modern shortcuts adopted to revive age-old crafts that are now flourishing throughout the region as never before. Extension centers have also been established to help the tribal people develop sericulture Assam's ancient cottage industry, agriculture, and animal husbandry. The Haringata milk colony near Calcutta has added 2,000 milch cattle to its number, thereby raising the total to about 5,000 animals. The Haringata milk plant now processes about 1,300 morns of milk daily. As new industries are created in the eastern region, new townships arise to house the growing colonies of employees. But these modern townships are planned with a purpose, to cater to the needs and welfare of every citizen. What they lack in age, they make up for with amenities that even the lowliest worker can enjoy. Here's evidence of the most exciting form of urban planning, the creation of a new capital, Bhubaneswar. Unfettered by tradition, in tune with the dimensions of the age we live in. But freedom is for all, each to have and to hold. And so nature's most humble citizens are favored too with sanctuaries where they can also enjoy their own way of life, free of the fear of man. We shoulder heavy burdens now as we build a new region of health, wealth and happiness, a joyful mosaic in the new India in the making.